Hello friends, thank you for listening to this special presentation of The Word Master Presents. Today we're looking at the topic, Not Against Flesh and Blood. But before we begin, even though this is just a short presentation, I would like to open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the understanding of your word. I thank you, dear God, for every student of the word that's listening to this presentation just now, O oh God. Father, the subject matter involved, though indeed it is a very serious subject matter, dear God, help us as children of yours to remember that indeed not only are we under your protection, but we are also your witnesses. You tell us, dear God, that you live in us and you walk in us, dear God, that in you we live and move and have our being. And therefore, if we are warring, dear God, it ought not to be against the flesh, but it ought to be a spiritual battle, because indeed the enemy is not flesh and blood. And so help us understand these principles, dear God, as we get into the heart of this lesson. May we learn, dear God, not to offend or be offended by others. And so give us a teachable spirit now. Bless your words to our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, our topic is not against flesh and blood. If you have your Bibles handy, please turn with me. We're examining two passages of scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 to 12, and 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. Again, Ephesians 6, 10 to 12, and 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. We begin. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Second Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. Beloved friends, listeners, this message is a very dear and delicate one. Uh, so I did not enter it lightly. And that's why I needed to begin with prayer. Even though it is short, it is indeed important that we understand the basic essence of what is being brought out. Beloved, Jesus said in Matthew 5, showing the principle of how we ought to operate, that we are to not retaliate when we are attacked. That we are to show Christian principles in all our dealings. In Romans, through Paul again, he emphasizes that we are not to overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus tells us to love our enemies, bless them that persecute us. Beloved, understand this. Your enemy could be your friend from just the day before. Something said, something implied, something done, and that best friend, bosom buddy as it were, would be your worst and bitterest enemy. And no marvel, for it all began at the throne of God himself. So our scriptures, which are indeed twin scriptures in Corinthians and Ephesians, show us a principle. Our enemies are not carnal. And so therefore our weapons cannot be carnal. Take for example the analogy I just drew. Your friend becoming your enemy. What are some of the carnal weapons that could be applied to the situation? You take back your stuff that you let them borrow or you let them have in fact. The rip in the relationship is so deep that you don't even feel the need to come together and hash out the disagreement. They don't even know what was said or what was done. You don't even give them a chance to make the wrongs right. You're so hurt and crushed. 
and your anger and bitterness and malice towards them is evident. Carnal weapons. See, it doesn't have to be guns and bombs and bullets. Those are deadly weapons indeed. But I submit to you solemnly that when you are angry with one that you held in such high confidence for such a long time, and they don't even know the reason why, believe you me, they would rather have you drop the mother of all bombs on them than be angry with them. I promise you that. But as Christians, again I submit that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're told he who takes the sword or the gun as it was today or whatever implements of war we have will die by the sword. He that leads into captivity will himself go into captivity. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Therefore, even though we live in the flesh, we don't war after the manner of the flesh. Our weapons cannot be carnal because we are told, and emphatically so, that our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemy operates indeed, as the Bible says, through the children of disobedience, but Remember the lessons of Jesus all the time. Impetuous Peter acting up. And Jesus didn't say, get thee behind me, Peter. No, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savest not the things of God. And that's what we read. We just finished reading that in Second Corinthians 10 and verse 5. Casting down imaginations, who is Satan's, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Get thee behind me, Satan, the weapons of our warfare. And if you continue to read down to verse 18 in Ephesians 6, you'll see the importance of having yourself armed with this whole armor of God. Do further research and study, and you'll see that this whole armor, this armor of light that is spoken of in verse 14 is indeed the Lord Jesus Christ himself, as it says in Romans 13, and verse 14, Beloved, we have such an important battle to fight in these last days. The fight is against self. An ever deepening death to self is so important because one of the things that we are frightened so much is to defend the self when indeed we have no self to defend. And that's why we easily lash out. And this becomes so even evidently so for professed Christians. Because all we see is a person that's wronged us. We don't see the demons behind the person that's wronging us. I say it so often that flesh and blood is easily remedied. Their actions against us. Their mortal lives could be so easily snuffed out. You have to worry about them again. Never. So many people do that. Somebody annoys me, offends me, I shoot them or kill them. I stab them. Whatever. But beloved, I submit to you if you were even on a deserted island and there was no one around you that very same demon working in the atmosphere will still torment you we're not wrestling against flesh and blood we're wrestling against powers that are way older than us and if you take out that one medium they'll just jump into another if you escape that one medium they'll just go into the other that's nearest to you and wreak havoc and so beloved the answer then is to war with the weapons of righteousness. Take unto you the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Beloved saints of God, my family, understand this. And as we go to war, let us have the eyes of Elisha to see the invisible, to know that they that are for us are more than they that are against us. Beloved, let us learn not to study war against flesh and blood anymore. Lay down the weapons of the flesh, the bitterness and the malice and the backbiting, the slander, the name calling, the gossiping, the tale bearing. Lay them all down. And go into your secret place, your closet, and dear, lift up that one person before the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 12. Here we go now. 
as we seek to close out the weapons of our warfare. If your enemy is hungry, feed him or her. If your enemy is thirsty, feed him or her. If your enemy needs help with your homework, help them. If they are going through emotional problems, be a listening ear. For by so doing, you will cast coals of fire upon their heads. You will cause their consciences to be pricked. In other words, do not be overcome by evil. But overcome evil with the good. That is the Spirit of God. Let us learn to get along with one another. Let us learn to tolerate each other's idiosyncrasies, beloved. Remembering that we are not all perfect beings. Remember that the enemy is not the person. It's the demons that are seeking to take control of the person. Love one another. Love, the Bible says, covers a multitude of sins. Only by love. Is love awakened? Are we teaching the truth?